to push us over. And I thought, isn't this exactly what life is like? Because the enemy uses people to knock you down. It's not that he, the enemy is knocking you down. The enemy is using people to knock you down. So I'm stuck on me. Living is better when others are part of your life. See, I find in our ministry, I, I told my wife, we had a conversation about this, and I said, honey, in all our years of ministry, this is the first time that there was a function that didn't involve me, you, or one of our kids. That was the first time. Ever. And believe me, every time I try to say something, uh, Pastor, we got this. We want you not to worry about anything. I still was worried. Not because I didn't trust, but because I knew there are people involved in our life that don't understand that we were not involved. You see where this is going. Now, there are people that are close to us. They're my family, my siblings. They get very hurt quickly. Y'all have family like that? Any little thing. You did this on purpose. You're mad at me. That's why you kept me out. Yeah, I have those. We haven't begun to put out those fires yet. I haven't had time to go out and put out fires. Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begun. Zechariah 4.10 Whenever we are working in ministry, we could have a ministry that is huge. But huge ministry have huge problems. So I want to discuss with you some huge problems that I have seen in ministries that have grown overnight. We have a very famous pastor that I admire him. I listen to his messages and every time he preaches on anything, I just feel so fed. But he started a men's ministry and he allowed the men to run it. And it became a men's gay club. Then he had to stop the men's ministry because he couldn't have his hands on the ministry because he had lots to do. So growing slowly, it's better. But growing slowly has its also its disadvantages. That when you grow slowly, you get a lot of people who want to follow and no one who wants to lead. And we become a, a follower church instead of a leading church. See, when things grow fast, you have people who want to grow just as fast as the things are growing. And these are people who want to be in charge. So they're drawn to huge churches. They're not drawn to small churches. So we have people who are drawn to small churches usually have that I want to stay small mentality. But this too is not natural because every seed when planted should grow. Any seed that did not grow was a dud. So, don't despise your small beginnings. See, we started our church and it grew quickly overnight. I know you're looking around, you're like, what? Uh, this is not a huge church. Well, when we started our ministry, we had 350 members within three months. And they run us, ran us ragged. We did everything. We cleaned, we picked up, 
we help people pay bills, we counseled, and we were so worn out that I was about to quit the ministry. Because all I was doing was helping everybody and had no time to help me. Chris came to my house yesterday to help me do some work. And Chris noticed something about my house. I have a lot of work to do. And the reason why I don't have time to do all the work is because all my time is taken. Every minute of my life is absorbed by something that I have to do. So I have to put other things in the back burner. And while God says, don't despise your small beginnings. But we're not supposed to always be small. Because if you had a baby, and 10 years later, that baby is still a baby, you should have taken that baby to the doctor a long time ago. Because even though we're supposed to start small, we're not supposed to remain small. So everyone's mindset should start to mature more and more. I'm always working with our youth, and the reason why I'm working with the youth is that sometimes the adults are stuck in their ways. I can preach about something, and they'll change their mind for one day, but they'll return to what they were doing the next. And I find that adults get their feelings hurt a lot faster than the teenagers do. <laughs> this morning I went out and I looked at my yard and I saw these squirrels. And I haven't seen squirrels in my yard for a really long time because I've had so many dogs. And all the dogs would keep the squirrels up on the tree. And this morning as I saw those squirrels, I thought they were all looking for nuts. They were working hard for winter time. They weren't hanging around like this squirrel. Now, I know you can't see it, but the squirrel is hanging around on a bird's nest. It's not supposed to eat the food of the bird because it wasn't put there for the squirrel. It was put there for the birds. <laughs> and I thought it was cute because he's doing what he's not supposed to do. He's hanging around eating what belongs to someone else. I have a few verses here and I want to go through them quickly. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 Now this is really something that should be preached in Seattle. Because we have such a hard uh, government in Seattle that wants to support a whole bunch of homelessness. Homelessness is not something that God supports in the scripture. It tells us how to help the poor. The Bible does tell us how to help the poor. It has rules to helping the poor. Has rules like this. When you are picking up your harvest from the field, don't pick up all of it. Leave some. If you passed it, don't go back and pick it up. Leave it there for those who don't have, who are walking behind you, gleaning from the field. That means that if you're poor, you still got to find some job. Find something to do. I've gone to many of these cities and seen people get newspaper and some water and smear dirt on my windshield. And my windshield was worse after they tried cleaning it than it was before they cleaned it. And then they want me to give them something for making my windshield worse. This is not what God is speaking about. The one who is unwilling to work. Do look at that word unwilling, not willing, will not. 
It's not saying the one who can't. The ones who are, are handicapped. It's saying the ones who do not want to work. See, we have this dilemma in church too. We have some that are here and they don't want to work. They just want to sit down on Sunday, hear the message. Uh, don't put me on any board. No, I can't give up any of my time. No, I'm unwilling to work. I do not want to work. So God says, don't feed you. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, newcomers. Make it your ambition to lead a focused life. Attend to your own business and to work with your hands. Focus life. Mind your business. Work with your own hands. Focused. Mind your own business. Work with your own hands. See, we like the drama of church. What's he doing? Where's he going? Who's he talking to? Ooh, and we're on everybody's business. Here, we're, since we're smaller, we know everybody's business. And if we don't know your business, we're going to ask questions because we want to know your business. And then I go, Pastor, I'm not gossiping. But if you said but, you're gossiping, okay? Uh, no, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. But, Pastor, you need to know. If I need to know, God already told me. So if God didn't tell me, I don't need to know. But, you know, this is, this is happening. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Keep that to yourself. Mind your own business. Whew, this is a hard message to preach. Y'all just don't know. I don't come to church to preach hard messages, okay? I come to church, and I want people to keep on coming. All right, I'm just like any other pastor. I want you to keep coming. I like your company. I like seeing your faces. I want to see your smile. But there's certain things about church that I don't like. And there's certain things about church that God don't like. God don't like people who are, I don't even know how to say it in English, so I'm going to say it in Spanish, Medici. How do you say that in English? Busybody. They don't know what a busybody is. Nosy, yeah, nosy rosy, yes, Medici, nosy rosy. Yeah, we, we don't want nosy people. I've had one of our members that came up and something happened in cyber world. Something happened and he came apologizing and I'm like, I don't know anything about that. But I don't want you to know before you found out. I said, even if I found out that happened before. And God forgave you, I forgive you. That's how it's supposed to be. Oh, but it happened 10 years ago, Pastor. It could be still, wait a second. Shut up. God forgave you. God forgave them. I don't need to know. Stop trying to change my viewpoint of somebody. God forgave them. I forgive them. I don't need to know. I forgave a lot of stuff. I don't know I forgave. Because <laughs> God made us all new. So we need to start. stop trying to poke the horse. Leave the horse alone. Because the horse is known to do something. It's known to kick. <laughs> and if you got kicked, that's your problem. You shouldn't have gotten in there being in the back of the horse. All right. So focus. Mind your own business. Keep your hands working. I'm not telling you not to be concerned of what your pastor is doing. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, if you're coming to this church, make sure I'm living the life I'm supposed to be living before you. If you're sitting under any other leader, make sure that they're living the life they say they are living. Because the anointing comes down from the head. And woe to you if what you're getting is bad stuff. But if I should fall, please come and approach me before you go and approach another member. See, sometimes, I, you know, I'm sitting here listening to this stuff about Trump and all this junk that he supposedly did on a phone call. And I'm like, they weren't there. That sounds like church. 
It does. It sound like church. <laughs> Pastor said so, <laughs> such and such. Wait, was that the Sunday you were absent? <laughs> yes, that's the Sunday I was absent, but I heard it from, from this person that that's what you said. Well, that may have been what I said, but what was the context? Because I just showed a video a few weeks ago that had the N-word on it several, several times. Does pastor feel okay with this? No, pastor don't feel okay with this. That's what pastor shared it with you. So you understand, I don't feel okay with this. So for all of those who are viewing us on Facebook and YouTube, we didn't put it on Facebook and YouTube because it was offensive. And I wanted our members to understand, I don't feel good about this. God doesn't feel good about this. But if you weren't here and you heard that pastor put a video that had a whole bunch of N-words on it, you might stop coming. While pastor did nothing wrong. I didn't do anything wrong at all. You weren't here. You missed what was the reason. These hands of mine have supplied my own needs. Acts 20, 34. Now, I minister in the pattern of Paul. Because Paul did not receive a salary from those who were following. He occasionally got an offering. Paul also writes in 1 Corinthians 4.12, I work hard with our own hands. So I'm not one to sit before you and you do that, you do that, you do that, and I'm going to sit there and just watch you. If you've been in this ministry, you know that that's not how I do things. That's not how my wife does things. And if anything, you'll be worn out and how long we keep on working without taking breaks. I had one of our members to say, I'm hungry. When is Pastor going to stop? <laughs> and it's like, well, I'm sorry. I'm focused, so I didn't think of food. Uh, for y'all sake, let's take a break. So never get tired of doing good. And that's easy said than done. That's easier said than done. It's hard to keep on working and not feel tired. Now, you guys don't know this, but I had to be encouraged by my wife and my two girls within the last two weeks because I got to the point to where I said, this is enough. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of all that we have to do. I'm tired. I'm tired. And we were about to just stop everything. But my wife encouraged me. And, and Ariel encouraged me. And Lizzie encouraged me. And they said, well, Dad, what are you expecting? You're supposed to have a difficult life. You're not supposed to have it easy. God did not call you to have the easy life. Dad, you do get upset a lot, and you do fuss a lot, but if you don't fuss, it's because you don't care. So you care, hence you fuss. And if everybody were to do what you are preaching off on Sunday, you will find somewhere else where the people are not doing so you can be used there instead. So this is who you are and this is what God has called you to do. And when they finish, I said, thank you. Thank you for encouraging me. It's kind of hard to have to hear it though from your own kids. <laughs> that God has chosen you to have a tough existence. So now what about you? You having a tough existence too. Are you going through the fire? Well, I tell you, even if you're going through the fire, you will not be burnt. <laughs> the grand thing about God is that he's called us to carry our own cross. But while we're carrying our own cross, we can learn to carry it with a smile. 
cargarlo con una sonrisa. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 6 through 13. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we commend you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teaching you receive from us. Wow, that is rough. Here in our ministry, we kind of ignore members that are always gossipy. We've had a few. And uh, what we've noticed in our ministry is that our members ignore them to the point that they get up and leave on their own. Our gossip is weird today because we do it on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. I mean, we sit there and talk about the pastor, talk about the pastor's wife, talk about the leaders of the church. And here's what I have discovered. The people who talk are doing absolutely nothing. So, 10% of the people are doing the work. 90% are doing nothing. But from those 90, you have some that get offended of the 10% who are working. Now, I really believe this with all my heart. When you're doing something, you're going to make mistakes. Make them. Because you're going to learn from your mistakes. So in this ministry, you got freedom to make mistakes. I'm not going to stop loving you because you messed up. I'm going to still love you even though you messed it up. Now, mind you, I'm going to tell you you messed it up. <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and pretend that you didn't mess it up. Uh, yes, you messed this up. Uh, let's see if we can restore this and keep going. Don't quit your job. Don't stop doing what you're doing. You just learn from that mistake. Because pastors done lots of mistakes. Oh, many mistakes. I remember, you know, I, I, I'm a comedian at heart. And I like to say funny things. And in the beginning of our ministry, all my jokes were fat jokes. <laughs> and I would say them. And my wife, after a while, she's like, honey, you're offending folks. I'm like, really? Yeah, because you're saying fat jokes. And we got some fat people in our service. Well, I didn't know that they were fat. I wasn't talking about them. <laughs> He's like, how are they supposed to feel? You said a fat joke. And they're fat. Stop saying fat jokes. And I, oh, there goes all my material. I got to go find new material. Because <laughs> I'm not trying to offend people. Because my best friends, including me, are fat. <laughs> This morning, I was trying putting on the suit, and I'm like, honey, this has to be the last time I wear this suit. I've outgrown it. <laughs> I am no longer skinny. I am now in the fatter version of myself. So now I have more to love. <laughs> when I you hug me, I am fluffier. I can now produce more heat. <laughs> See, it's okay if I said fat jokes if it's about me. Right. If it's fat jokes and it's not about me, it's not as funny. Okay. <laughs> if there's a person who is doing nothing and just causing problems, we avoid them. If they're being idle, what is idle? Doing nothing. Okay, there's an idle mindset, all right? So I'm going to go through and kind of share an idle mindset because we have a population of people who are chronically idle. 
They usually are people who are trying to run through the system. You know, and I, I have aid for this and aid for the other and aid for the next and aid for... I don't mind aid. I've used aid, okay? I've used every aid that they exist. I've been there, all right? I've done the food stamps. I've done the, you know, need money to pay the light bill. I've done, I've done through all of that. None of these things on their own are wrong. What is wrong is when you try to create the way to remain on them. So if you said, you know, I am handicapped, I can barely move, is there a job that you can do and receive a good salary with how you are physically? I saw this man, a uh, professor, he recently died, wheelchair, 100%, uh, nothing moved except his mouth. He couldn't even talk. He had to talk through a machine. I forgot his name. David what? Stephen Hawking. So y'all know him, right? Y'all have heard of him? Oh, if he had to live on welfare, he's going to get the minimal that welfare gives. But he didn't allow his disability to tell him who he was. He did far above what he should have been able to do with his limitation. He used the one thing he still had, his brain. Now, I've listened to some of his teachings and I don't agree with him at all because I am also an intellectual, but I guarantee you this, he did not survive with $600 a month. I believe he died a millionaire. Man, that should just put us in our place really quick, right? <laughs> oh, that hurt, Pastor. He died a millionaire? All he had was his brain? We got a brain. We have more. But what we have been doing is we've been satisfied with what we can do. Well, I want you to expand your territory to go beyond where you thought you could reach. And it starts first with your spirit. It starts first on the inside and then it has to be projected on the outside. So you start by just dreaming. We need to start dreaming again because we take our lives and we sit and see ourselves in the same thought that we've been all our lives. But we have to start seeing further than where we are. When God spoke things into existence, do you understand that there was nothing before he spoke? Imagine if he was like us, he would have never opened his mouth because the condition was there was nothing we all know math everything that is multiplied by zero will always be zero in mathematics zero plus zero is zero the constant of the universe is zero is empty so there was nothing and they should remain being nothing but God. Amen. Come on, we got something that the world doesn't have. All right. Yeah, you can be nothing but God. Yeah, people can go around you, loser, but God. Oh, come on, don't count me out. See, I, I, there's a song by Carmen that I loved. And Jesus was boxing Lucifer, and Lucifer knocked him out. And Jesus is on the ground, and the referee comes in, and the referee starts to count. And the referee says, 10, 9. And when Lucifer realized what was going on, he said, what are you doing? Because you're supposed to count from 1 to 10. 
But that's not how God does things. God goes from the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end. He can switch the order of whichever way he wants to. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. So he can switch the order for us. Yeah, he was losing. But watch him win. We need to not be idle. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow example. Oh man, this generation does not understand about following example. I'm not talking to y'all over 30, okay? I'm talking to y'all under 30. You see examples and you want to do your own thing. For some reason or another, doing your own thing seems to be the way to do things. Now, I don't understand because the young folks under 30 are always following somebody but they are always following somebody who shouldn't be followed you tell them what to wear and what not to wear they don't want to wear what you telling them to wear or not to wear but they want to wear what the idiot is wearing they're following the idiot but they're not following you but they don't understand they're still following and telling you these words I'm being myself you're not being yourself you're being this person and I didn't raise you to be that person I raised you to be your person I'm trying for you to be you while you're trying to be somebody else isn't it an irony now some of the parents understand what I'm saying some of the young folks don't understand yet see I have this daughter she's 18 years old and she likes going to the thrift store and likes buying weird stuff and puts on these weird stuff with these patterns that other people don't put together and then people see her and say oh that looks so cute and she said yeah it does doesn't it and where did you get it from? I got it at the thrift store. See, she's learned to be her own person. She's not trying to be somebody else. She's being who she is. But even while she's being who she is, she still shows up in front of me and said, Dad, is this okay? Now, dad is not trying to limit her. Dad is helping her understand the other people of my gender are going to look at her in a certain way and she wants to be understood that she's not trying to show who she is that she's not. So God wants us to follow the right examples. Follow examples. There are examples. Now, if you watch TV, I'm sorry. There are no good examples on TV. No good examples on TV. You come to church, I can't tell you, watch this TV show and follow that example. Because that's not the case. They always try to show a little bit more than what they should show. So we have to follow good examples. We were not idle when we were with you. Oh man, I love saying that. I went to your church and I was not idle when I was at your church. When it was time to do something, I did something. I didn't sit there and waiting for you to bring me coffee, bring me tea. But we've had some people to go on mission trips that they wanted people to serve them. They asked me, what do you want, pastor, when you're bringing the word? You know, I'm, my throat is a little dry and fighting a little cold. Would it be okay if you give me some tea with honey? Oh, sure, pastor, we'll get you some tea with honey. And then the person in the front row said, yeah, one for me too. What do you mean one for you too? You're sitting down. Doing nothing. I'm speaking. I'm asking them to give me something so I can continue to speak. 
You asking to give you something for your comfort. Uh, listen, we do this in church all the time. We come in and we want to be comfortable. We, we put air conditioning so we will be comfortable. We put heat so you'll be comfortable. Pastor, I don't like the heat. I'm hot. It's your comfort. But I'm up here sweating underneath all this coat. Because <laughs> we got some people who are cold natured. We don't like being uncomfortable. Forget going to Honduras and we're going to take a cold bath. Y'all don't know about those cold baths. Mm -mm. Oh, you don't know about doing the bath shout before you take a bath. You don't know about the jumping up and down, jumping up and down, jumping up and down, jumping up and down, hoes and ah, jumping up and down. <laughs> We don't know. We want to be comfortable. Estar so we are not supposed to be idle and no neither or we supposed nada. to be finding comfort. Tenemos, oh, Nor did we eat nada. anyone's food without paying for it. No On the contrary, we worked pagar. night and day laboring no and toiling so that we would not be a burden no to any of you. Molestia. Man, I really like Paul, don't I? I think we all should like Paul. Siempre. Does that sound like church no, today? No. All right, now our local universities that major in theology. All our Ivy League universities started as a Christian university. Some of you may not know that. Harvard, Yale started as a Christian university. It started so they can produce pastors. Is that what you think of when you say Harvard today? Or Yale, is that what you think of? I mean, so far from their beginnings. But they still have a theological seminary at their universities. And they did a survey of how many people have given their lives to Christ. And you'll be surprised to know only 10% of people studying to be pastors have received Jesus as their Savior. 90% are doing it because it's a great income. Ooh, not this church. We did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. I'm not here saying no I don't get paid no because I am not worthy Porque of it. No estoy, eh, digno, Neither is my wife mi doing this because we are not worthy of no, it. We'll find no out what digno. scripture said. I asked in October for us not to do pastor's appreciation because every pastor appreciation I had to stop myself from being angry because you'll have people to come up and say pastor how I love you on the day of pastor appreciation but don't see that for the no, rest of the year. No I thought it was a hypocrisy that we do. And I don't want y us no to be hypocrites. It doesn't mean that I don't want no to be appreciated. Que, no ser it's just if we can take the hypocrisy si out of the appreciation, I, am, I will receive it wholeheartedly. But we all know what we're, I'm talking about. There are some who I feel appreciated and my wife feels appreciated. There are some don't say anything. One of them is my own son. Y'all every year Dad, I want to apologize for not doing what I'm supposed to and tears. And then the church members are so moved. Oh, Oh, that's so sweet. And the next day, I'm going to half kill you. Going to half kill you today. 
because nothing's changed. It was just a moment to be able to get in front of everybody, get some attention, and then let's go back to the normal. Now, how do I relate this to you? Because it, it's the same thing in your life. Yes, you're not pastoring, but if you're leading, you're doing the same thing. You have the same kind of response towards you. Do you like someone telling you how much they love you? And then the next day they slap you. Come on now, how many of you signed up for that? Honey, I'll never do it again. We had an instance this week. So in the instance that we had this week, we had someone to get hurt. And we don't want the person to get hurt again. So we want to be able to say, don't, don't repeat it. Don't repeat it. This is the same for all of us. Esto es lo mismo para todos. Don't repeat whatever no stuff. Repita. So this is what I'm doing Así here at church. Es lo que estoy en la We're not repeating patterns no vamos a repetir that brings que death instead of life. Que traiga muerte en vez de vida. For even when we were with you, we Así gave you this rule. Aquí, the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. El que no Man, there it goes again. Trabaja, no you're not willing to work si no you notice trabajar, again is willing you're not willing to work my uh, I had a complaint from a teacher this week and the teacher said your son loves his device he can get on the device from the beginning of the class to the end of the class and play the video game all class time and even forget about going to the bathroom because all he wants to do is play on that device when he got home he said buddy I will not hear this complaint again because that's following a pattern you're doing something but is it profitable and I always get these answers from the kids in school oh yeah when I grow up I'm going to be a professional video game player and then I got to tell them the truth I'm sorry you're not that good I'm sorry they're playing it the wrong way if you want to play to actually be good, you study the game. You don't just play the game. You study the game. You know more about the game than anybody knows about the game. But they're not taking the time to study the game. They just want to play the game. Chris, am I saying the truth? Study the game. Oh, right here it has this extra little uh, um, sneak or whatever they call it. You can hit this wall at a certain angle and then you end up somewhere else. My son Elijah used to do that. I hated playing with him. In the beginning when he was little, I loved playing with him because I could whoop his tail. But then he began to study the game. And when he studied the game, he found cheats. And then he would know all the cheats. And I didn't know the cheat and I'm sitting there trying to drive the thing and trying to hit and all of a sudden, where'd you go? I was about to hit you and you are finished the game. How do you do that? Oh, dad, there's a wall right there that's not a real wall. It's actually a door to go somewhere. How do you know that wall is there? I studied the game, dad. I don't have time to study no game. Dad, there are blogs about this. You can go and learn what all these cheats are. Oh, time to find a blog. So on every level, there's a cheat. Yes, there's also combinations. Wait a second. 
Now you're saying they're Ahora cheats and then they're combos to cheat and you want me to learn this left, right, uh, up button, down button, click both clicks and then the bottom click and then it's like, I don't have time for that. So just playing the game does not mean you're going to be able to be competitive. Because on the trip to Mexico, Elijah played with a lot of our people on the bus. And he kicked all their tails. And then after he finished, he said, I was trying to let them win. I said, Elijah, nobody want to play you. You keep on winning. Dad, I was trying to let them win. But when they got close, I couldn't take it, and I just went in. <laughs> we hear that some among you are idle and disruptive. Oh, my goodness. Some are idle and disruptive. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the food they eat. And as for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. It is not God's intention no es la de Dios for you to be idle. Para que no hagas nada. It is not God's intention no es la for you to do nothing. Que no hagas nada. Find something algo to do. Para hacer. If you have si nothing no, that you no have found that you can do, para hacer, invent something. Invent algo. They tell me that necessity is the mother of invention. Es la madre de la find something Busca to do. Para hacer. I asked Ms. Donna, dije a Ms. Donna uh, in the beginning of this year, de este año, can you make me something that I saw at this store? Que yo vi una tienda, and she made me something similar. Ella me hizo algo but it similar, wasn't as sturdy because the other one you can sit down el otro te sentar, and it can hold your weight. Te puedes, Hers, el de ella, it didn't hold your weight. No te aguanta, and I put it on the side of my room on the floor. Piso, and I can tell you digo, there's nothing that gets more attention in my room than what Donna made. Because the moment a child doesn't feel good, they said, Mr. White, I don't feel good today. Can I go to the back? And they go and they lay down on the pillow that Donna made. That pillow gets used on a daily basis. There's nothing in my classroom that receives half the attention as the pillow that Donna made. But Donna made it with her Pero own hands and it took her time to sit there and hours of knitting horas, horas, to put this horas, together horas, horas, to hand it to me. And as I looked at it, I said, it's beautiful. No veía, dije, and I sat on it and uh, I, hit the, <laughs> I hit the concrete a little bit harder <laughs> than I thought I would have. <laughs> and I put it to the side <laughs> and I have to constantly spray it with a Lysol because all my sick kids get on it. And they all tell me, Mr. White, we love your pillow. She put her hands to do it and did not know she has been a blessing to every sick child in my class. God wants you to put your hand and do something because you never know what your hands are touching. Now we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. So here, Paul is telling you about those who are working hard for you. See, when someone is ministering, I'm ministering to you. Without you knowing, I'm constantly thinking of you. When you're going through, I'm going through with you. When you have need, I'm trying to figure out how I can help your need. Because you're a part of me, and I am part of you. The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor 
especially those who work is preaching and teaching. For scripture says, do not muzzle the ox while it's treading out the grain and the worker deserves his wages. I don't like being compared to an ox. I don't think any of you will want to be compared to an ox, but an ox is an animal that does hard labor. Now, I got to see this when I went to Nicaragua. I went to a lumber yard, and they had two oxen that were tied together, and they were put a tree, a cut tree, tied to those two ox. And the man will begin to pull on the muzzle. And lo and behold, those two ox would move that whole entire tree. Now, he, the man wasn't trying to struggle to pull the ox. He wasn't like a donkey. Come on, come on, donkey, come on. He wasn't doing that. He was barely putting any pressure. And those two oxen were moving that tree as if it was light. They weren't struggling to move it. They moved it. And while this always offended me before being called an ox, I was looking at those two ox thinking this is what God compares you to. He's not comparing you to the animal itself. He's comparing you to the strength of the animal. Ooh. See, I don't mind being an ox now because I saw an ox could move a tree. <laughs> but then God says, don't muzzle it. When it's working in the field, don't cover his mouth. Allow it to be able to eat while it works. This is what God is saying of your pastor. Allow your pastor to eat while he works. See, when we're doing things in our ministry, and I hear of other pastors, how their ministry have done something, Oh, come on, you know what I'm talking about. You get on Facebook. We send our pastor over here. I remember someone said that we said, they sent me to Jamaica. I was so offended. I was offended because I paid for them to go to Jamaica. And then they turn around and try to make people think they paid to send me somewhere. This being pastor Esto, should not be hard. No debe ser we understand that. Entienden? It should not no debe ser be hard. It should be in the contrary. Debe ser lo it should be a great pleasure. Debe ser un Can't wait no to esperar. come and minister to our church Para members. Venir a when I say things like, come on, finish the wall. Vamos, we should have members to say, you know, let's finish the wall so pastor don't have to find time to work on the wall. But the wall is still not finished. And the wall is waiting to pastor has time to make the wall. Now we have one of our newcomers that just, she put that face, I know. That one wall over there for a whole entire year, I said, put up the wall, please. One day, pastor came and put up the wall. As I was putting up the wall, we had a member to show up and say, you're doing it wrong, pastor. And everything in me said, grab him by the neck and don't let go. Because a whole year, well, I'm not getting paid to put up no wall. Well, I'm not getting paid to preach. And I'm doing it every Sunday. I'm not getting paid to teach. And I'm doing it every Sunday. I'm not getting paid to do praise and worship. And I'm doing it every Sunday. I don't get paid to counsel, but I do it every time someone needs counseling. Come on now, don't tell me about what you're not getting paid. Because we're in this boat together. We're in this together. 
Ooh, it's gotten really quiet in here. Oh, se puso muy callado aquí. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know, the odd thing is that we have women who want to do it. It's just that our men are the ones who know how to do it. So our ladies, we're going to start doing, see, what I started doing in my house, I started teaching Ariel and Lizzie. Because Ariel and Lizzie are better workers. So it's like, Ariel, come on over here. Let me show you how to do this plumbing. And she'll go down there and learn how to do the plumbing. Come on, Ariel. Come over here and learn how to put this joist next together with this board. News use the nail gun I'm starting to use what I got instead of thinking of the gender because our gender roles are changing I'm just telling you what I see what is needed for life to grow liquid water essential chemicals an energy source this is what we need to grow we need water I don't drink enough fluids but at the same time I think my body doesn't want extra fluids because the moment I give it extra fluids it makes me go to the bathroom <laughs> and sometimes it seems that I go to the bathroom more than I drink fluids I don't know what's wrong with my body. My skin must absorb water. Because I'm like, wait a second. What are I, where does all this fluid go? I mean, I just keep going and going. And I'm like that pink bunny, you know. I got to go again. And being a school teacher is not conducive to have to keep going to the bathroom. You know, my kids don't know it. When I send them to the bathroom, there's a uh, teacher's bathroom on the way. I stop at the teacher's bathroom before. <laughs> and then they didn't notice I was gone for a good two minutes. <laughs> they're, they're all going to the bathrooms themselves. So it's like, oh, they don't notice. But we need water. Water is good for you. Water cleanses your body. It takes off the toxins that are in there. It flushes it. It also causes your intestines to start movement. So if you're one of those to where you're blocked up, drink more water. So what does the Bible say about water? Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Man, that's a lot. First, we got to draw near. Oh, it's cold outside. If I, if we didn't have a heat source in here, and all we had was that little heat box over there with the propane, we understand drawing near. Because all the cold natured people will huddle around where the source of heat is coming from. We look like a whole bunch of homeless persons all trying to warm ourselves up <laughs> around the fire. So we know how to draw near. But we don't draw near when it comes to church. We try to sit far. All right, so look around right Mira now. Alrededor. You notice our first two rows are pretty much empty. We're not drawing near. We try to stay a little behind. Because we don't want pastors to pick on us. Like if we were a, com a comedy show and I'm just going to pick on what you're wearing. Of course I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to pick on you. We seldom draw near when it comes to God. Because we feel a little uncomfortable that we have not been perfect. Well, there is no one perfect. No, not one. I love reading that in the Psalms. There's no one that's good. No, not one. That's in the Psalms. There's no one good. No, not one. So that should help us feel better. And the pastor is the part of no, not one. 
es parte de I get up here and I give you a message yo me paro aquí, te doy but at the same time I got to fight stuff in my life too that want to rise itself up so I'm not sitting here telling you oh, I'm perfect oh I'm fighting every day just to maintain and hopefully get a little further so we got to draw near with a true heart no hypocrisy honesty not trying to fluff my neighbor or make me feel I'm something I'm not no I'm being honest a true heart have assurance in the faith that I have and I have my heart sprinkled from evil conscience then I need to be washed with pure water then we need essential chemicals now I think I call it essential oils you know that fish oil that when you burp it's nasty pastor you did not say that in my book oh come on if you've ever had the fish oil and then you had to burp you're like oh my goodness gracious I hope my breath don't smell like that you're talking to somebody trying to talk sideways it's like what are you talking about? I just had a fish oil, you know, because I needed that essential oil stuff. And it was, uh, so I'm hoping you're not smelling it. Oh, I don't smell anything. Oh, thank you. Because, man, it did not feel good. I, I, I didn't mind taking the capsule because I didn't taste the thing. Oh, how about when you took that garlic pill? or drank some vinegar with the mother why is it that the stuff that are good for you <laughs> don't like to stay down they always want to come back up again so you can enjoy the second time <laughs> so I call these things essential oils the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight for the blind to set at a liberty them that are bruised well what does this have to do with oil the anointing is oil it is the essential oil that I need for my ministry and it is the essential oil that you need for yours because in all these areas if you are doing it without anointing you are doing nothing it is the anointing that breaks the yoke I am not trying to do anything of my own power because I'm just a human that's all I am I want to return to where I came from and I came from dirt and my body is craving to go back to dirt oh come on y'all giving me that look you know when winter comes and that winter weather comes I gotta apply more oil on my skin because since I'm a little darker I get a condition that all people who are dark are well aware of we get ashy what ashy means is not that I have ash on me is that my dry dead skin becomes noticeable now those who are a lighter complexion don't understand ashiness I know this because when I went into the military there was a young dark skinned man that took a shower came out and we have to be in the back in our undies and here comes the doctor and he dismissed a young guy because he was too ashy and he called it a condition you know that he has a condition of extra dry skin and I'm looking at that doctor like you're an idiot his condition is he's dark skin that's all we all have extra dry skin you just can't notice it when you're white you notice it when you're dark skin cause your flaky skin turns white so we need some oil we need some ointment oh come on I'm going somewhere 
See, it's bad. You, I put a black suit or black shirt on in the wintertime, and I do like this, and then I got to go. Then I forget, and I do it again. And oh, a pastor, is that, you know, you're getting this from your hair. No, I'm getting it from my face. It's not even my head. Everybody loses dead skin. And we need oil. So another thing that oil is considered is considered gladness. Oh, some of us need some of that. We need some essential oil of gladness. He has given me the oil of gladness, the garment of praise instead of mourning. I need some oil. What about you? Don't you need some of that essential oil? Oh, uh, I think so. Pastor, I'm going through. I pray some oil of gladness on you. What? Uh, you need some essential oil, man. Uh, some vitamins and minerals are right there in that essential oil. The Holy Spirit has the answer for you. We need some essential oil. So he anointed me. Wait, but here he's talking about the preach. You doing anything for the body of Christ, you better be anointed. You better be anointed. You doing anything, you better be anointed. Oh, pastor, I gave him this word. Why you gave him that word? That's what I felt in my spirit. Really? Are we using the same spirit? Because that's not what I'm hearing in my spirit. I have found this out. I'm going to tell one of our members. But I won't tell you who the member is. This particular member said, Pastor, I always wanted to have this type of anointing on my life. So I've always chased after this type of ministry. Because that's how I wanted God to use me. That's it, but that's not what God gave you. Yeah, but that's what I always wanted. But that's not what God gave you. Yes, but you know, I can't help what I always wanted. I understand wanting something. And if you want a ministry like mine, please have it. Whew, goodness, because I never asked for a ministry like mine. But since I'm in front of people, people tend to think that you, you get to be in front, you get the respect, you get, I want to sit down right over there and hear somebody else. I don't want to be in the front. And because I don't want to be in the front, I'm in the front. I don't want this. This requires a different type of a essential oil. <laughs> And that essential oil requires a lot of sacrifice. So this person was speaking to other people of the anointing she wanted to have without having that anointing and kept missing because they didn't have the anointing for what they were doing. Be anointed. Now, I said that, so some of you are going to stop trying. Have you ever seen a baby get up and try to walk? What does that baby do? Fall. Baby going to get up again. It's going to fall. Baby will get up again. It's going to fall. It's going to get up and take, take three steps and fall. You know what we do every time that baby falls? Took three steps. Yay! Did you see it? Did you see the baby? The baby took three steps. Yay! Give it a year. Sit down. Goodness gracious, you can't sit down. <laughs> What happened is that we got to do this spiritually. Someone gets up and starts to do a little walk and we're like, yay, you're doing good. But after a while, it's like, okay, sit down. That's enough. It's, now you got to wait your turn. Everybody knows how to walk. Everybody knows how to run. You're not the only one. Oh, man, I'm really preaching, you know, if you can really get it. Because we get some people always, I am so anointed. You're not the only one. There are a lot of people who are running. You're not the only one running. Sit down. Wait your turn. 
Espera tu turno. Learn something. Aprende algo. Don't just run. No solo Come on, learn something. Because we see that in church all the time. They got a little word. So now they decided they're going to open up their own ministry. Oh, we've had people to do that here. Got up and started their own ministry. And all pastor did was smooth. them. Oh, we got new people so they don't understand pastor don't really do the lingo for texting because he ends up using it as a word shake my head <laughs> oh that's all I did just shake my head just shake my head this particular person went and started their own ministry didn't even ask just okay we got our own building we started our ministry we picked up all our stuff that we had in the church and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry for them. Father, help them, please. They think that this is fun. And went along, someone broke in and stole everything. Took everything. And that was the end of that. So we're not trying to run people out if you get offended in our ministry do understand this offenses will come I want you to understand pastor will offend you and pastor will not always apologize for offending you because truth is truth and sometimes truth hurts but when you go to the doctor to get surgery and the doctor cuts on you you don't ever leave that hospital saying I'm so mad at you you cut me I've never seen you do you get mad at the doctor for cutting you Whoo, so she's the exception to the rule you left a scar on me I can never go to the beach again I was trying to save your life I thought the life was more important than the scar so I cut you and I left a scar but your life has been saved man wouldn't it be wonderful if we had that attitude when we came to church he's only speaking something to save my life not trying to hurt you just trying to speak truth no I do not go home and prepare a message for you if this message hits you God gave it to me God didn't tell me it applied to you God just gave me a message and I'm trying to give the best message that I can to all of those who are hearing amen he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Man, I love this about God. God knows that I'm prone to weakness. And God, when he entreats me, he understands. I make mistakes. But you know, God doesn't hold my mistakes against me. God said, even though the righteous fall 70 times, God will raise them up. This is a paradox because he calls the one righteous even before they fail. <laughs> You're righteous. Then fail. Then God restores you back to righteousness. Only God will call you righteous before you failed and then says even if you do it 70 times I'm going to still pick up your righteous self up watch and pray that you don't enter into temptation the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak see what does it have to do this is the third one the energy Every life requires energy to grow. My energy comes from God. And God gives me energy even though I am prone to fail. Because I am prone to fail, I must pray before failure comes to my door. See, when people are following other folks, we have an artist that 
recently got saved and, and I, I just started praying for this artist more than I've ever even thought about this artist because he's winning thousands of people to Christ. Thousands of souls are being saved through this artist's life. And I said, Lord God, keep him. Don't let him falter. Lord God, allow him to stay in faith. Father, all of a sudden, things that never came against him are now coming against him. Father, Lord God, maintain his strength. Maintain him, Lord God. Wall him up that anything that the enemy has against him will not be able to reach him. Father, he is reaching thousands of people and great will be his fall if he falls. So God, allow him to stay standing. I shouldn't be the only one praying like this. The body of Christ should be praying like this. But instead, we got some that are rising up trying to say, you know, look where you come from. Look what you've done. Oh, come on, stop throwing stones. You couldn't handle it when it come your way. We got to start putting a hedge of protection of those who are ministering instead of being jealous that someone started ministering before you. He's doing what God wants him to do. He's winning souls. And this is what scripture says. He that winneth souls is wise. So I thank God for the wisdom. My source is the Lord. Your source is the Lord. Let me tell you what's not your source. Your source is not your job. Your source is not your husband. Your source is not your wife. Your source is not yourself. Your source is not your connections. Your source is only God. God is your source. It's amazing when we look up to the sun and think of how much energy we derive from the sun because everything is alive because of that light that is coming from the sun. Without that light that's coming from the sun, we will be a frozen nothing and there'll be no life on this planet. But that one sun it's one of trillions of suns in the cosmos. Every time you look upon the sky and see stars shining, all those stars are all suns. Now imagine my source made them. Whew. My source is the Lord. Your source is the Lord. Stop looking at yourself through your own means. Start looking through God's eyes. What is possible for me to do in God using me? Whew. What is possible? Because you know, you had Peter that saw this ghost because the ghost was doing something impossible so it had to be a ghost it couldn't be a true person because people don't do what this person was doing so they all cried out is that you and the voice spoke back and said yes it is me. And you had one violent person in the boat. Oh, I like violent people. Because violent people don't think it through. They just act on instinct. You know, they don't, they don't sit down and reason things out. <laughs> oh, okay, if it's you, tell me to come over there where you are. And that voice said, come on. God said a little more crunchy. Come on. Come on now. Come on. Bring yourself on over here. Come on. <laughs> and Peter does this thing. Being a professional fisherman at sea all his life, stepped over the edge of the boat and began to walk on water. 
Peter didn't stop before and thought, we don't walk on water. There are laws that exist that liquid cannot withstand the weight that you have. There are laws of buoyancy that if air is lighter than water, therefore I can always be on top of the water, but I'm a heavy mass and I'm going to go through. He didn't stop to reason. He just did it. Man, I love those kind of Christians. Oh, I love the Christians that don't think it through because they're thinking it through messes up. It really does because the, 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 now it's on your own strength instead of God's strength. We had someone here that started speaking in tongues last Sunday. Oh, this to receive easily because I said it has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with you. Not you. And began to speak in tongues. And then she apologized after she started speaking in tongues. I thought that was funny. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I'm like, sorry for what? Keep on going. Don't stop. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. And Peter did that. He got over there. And then he saw the size of the waves. Man, that's just like us, right? We see the problems that we have. And then he began to sink. Thinking of the problems. This wave is bigger than me. It's going to overtake me. And I am going to drown. And Jesus went within the boat. Man, Jesus had perfect timing. Got in the boat, reached out, and grabbed them, and pulled them up. Man, I can see it in my mind's eye. He only used one hand. I, the Bible doesn't say he only used one hand. That's what I'm telling you. In my man's uh, mind's eye, I'm just seeing Jesus just grab and just picked him up and say, Peter, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? So everyone in here, tell me what's the end of God in your life? What does he want to do in your life? Or do you see yourself being in the same place you are in right now? See, because God has said in his word that he wants you to be the head and not the tail. So if you're wondering what God wants, why are you being the tail? That's a dangerous place to be. Poop comes out at that end. I don't want to be in that end. I want to be in the front end where I get to enjoy the food. Not where I get to smell the food. You know, when it's been processed. <laughs> I want to be in the head end where I get to smell the food when it smells good. When it's like, yeah, man, I'm going to eat this. This is delicious looking. You know, I want to be in that end. I want to be in the end where I have eyes to see where I'm going, where I have nose to smell, where I have mouth to enjoy the food, where I have ears to hear, where I have a brain to think. I want to be in that end. I don't want to be in the tail where I have no control. Where all I can do is wag. Man, isn't that some Christians? Pay attention to me. This is all I have. I can wag. I can wag faster. I can wag slower. I can stop wagging. But I'm just used to being the tail. Somebody messed up in the 60s, 50s and 60s saying that poverty was next to godliness and we have not come out of that. We did not realize that Abraham was rich. Did not realize that Moses was raised as a prince of Egypt. Did not realize that when Jesus was born, that there were magis who came and presented them with myrrh, frankincense, and gold. Whew. Did not realize that God did not call us to always keep struggling. The head and not the tail. 
to lend and not have the need no to borrow. De tomar prestado. I'm looking forward for that church. Amen. I'm looking forward Amen. to that church. My iglesia. wife told me this morning that one of our members said that they want to have the ability of buying pastor a new suit every month. She told me that this morning. You know what I'm praying for? Lord God, give her the ability to buy me a new suit every month, but give her so much that this would be easy. Amen. There's a pastor in Atlanta that one of his members buys him a new Mercedes every year. Ooh. You say, oh, well, you just asking for stuff, pastor. No, you don't understand. That man owns a Mercedes dealership, and he began to give a pastor a new Mercedes every year, and his business started to flourish even more. What he thought was just giving, he did not understand that. You have to give to receive. And God bless his ministry. Before the pastor would turn his car in to get the new car. Now the pastor keeps on getting new cars every year without turning the other one in. So the pastor gives away a car every year to his church. Ooh, come on now. Pastor, you keep on preaching like that. That's a good word. <laughs> he gives a new car. He gives a car that's one year old. That's a good word, Pastor. That's a good word. Now put me on the list. <laughs> See, we don't mind stuff like this. What I want from you is for you to be used. I'm not asking nothing from me. I know that you heard a lot of giving towards pastor. But if all, if pastor should be completely honest, I would tell you I don't want nothing. Except God use you. That's all I want. If God uses you, I'm happy. I'm grateful. Yo estoy I want you to be used. Yo que tú seas usado. And God's going to start with the things that he's already established. Que él ya hizo. If you're idle doing nothing, tú no estás nada, you will continue being no idle doing nothing. Hacer nada. We have a law of motion. Una Anything that's in motion tends to remain in motion. Anything that is still tends parado, to remain still. Yeah, pastor sounds like he has an education. If you are moving, si te estás moviendo, move a little faster. Un poco más Lord God, where can I come in? Where can I fit in? What can I do? ¿Qué po, qué puedo Father, hacer? I don't want to just come in and no seem like I want to take over. Parece, parece que But Lord God, allow doors to be opened so I can be used. And let them open in such a way that I am welcomed. We have lots to do in this ministry. We have lots to do. We have a few people going with us to Honduras. We have no one going with, to our, with us to Honduras. That is their first trip, do we? Who? Antonio. Okay, so we have two that is their first trip. Ooh, my, our hearts go out for them, don't, don't it? So here's some things we have to be aware. We know nothing but Jesus. That means that whatever we plan, it's on paper. That's all. I know what I'm talking about, okay? I know what I'm talking about. When we get there, what God wants is God will let us know and he'll let us know so big that this is what he wants. Now we go planning because that's a smart thing to do. 
A man who builds a city without counting the cost is a fool. So we go through, we plan. But we know God's the source. God's the source, we're not the source. We went to Panama for vacation. Then we went to Panama for vacation. I ended up ministering a lot in Panama. All my vacation. Got invited to new churches. Went and preached to new churches. Loved what I was doing because the anointing of God was there. But you know, it messed up my plans. It's not what I planned. But I was grateful to do it God's way instead of my way. I was grateful to have an opportunity. So for our two men, we seldom go anywhere with men. I want to go places with men because I am tired of trying of looking like the gigolo, having an entourage of women going with them. Okay, it's been every trip. It's like a whole bunch of women and I'm the only man. You know, it's like, oh, I got tired of this. So I'm glad that we have some men that are going. But because we have men, you automatically will have authority. So please hear me. Because the authority is not yours. It is borrowed. You're going to nations that are men run. We don't know about that in the United States. Whatever you say, they will consider it truth. Fact words to live by so don't open your mouth if you don't know amen we're going to see a move of God man every time we go somewhere we're going to have bigger and bigger entourages Ariel got to see God use her in Panama Ooh. Lizzie, you too, right? Lizzie también. That was wonderful to see God use her, right? Qué lindo ver a Dios usarlos. You know what? They were expecting it. Ellos estaban esperando eso. They went there expecting God to use them. It's kind of weird, though, because they're my kids. The rest of you can be used, too. Los otros también pueden ser usados. Let's get expectant. Vamos a and when we come back, y we're going to have a normal condition. Vamos a tener una normal. So I'm warning you beforehand. Le estoy ya, we admitiendo. will all come back Regresamos angry. Enojados. Every time. Right, Erica? Donna, you will know it until you experience it, right? Well, I'll come back angry. Well, why are you angry? Because we saw God move. And then we get to religiousness of church. And that makes everyone angry. So, maybe not now. Honduras is already a planned trip. Who's going is going. But Dominican Republic is open. La República Dominicana está abierta. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, you know what? <laughs> it's, already, it's open. Está if you want to go, si ir, uh, to understand, entiende. you're not going to be comfortable. No va a estar Have that already in your head. Not going to be comfortable. No All right, it's not going to be comfortable. It's going to be hot. It's going to be sticky. We're going to be stuck in vehicles where we're on top of each other. We can go to these churches, no air conditioning. We got... Uh, None of those things are important. None of it is important. Pastor's suit is so wet. I mean, completely drenched in sweat. But you know, I never felt the heat. Never felt the heat while I was ministering. Afterwards, it's like, oh, I'm so hot. Amen. So, your father knows what you need before you ask him. This is my last line. Abba, 
knows what I need before I ask him. That's Aramaic. Abba means daddy. Daddy knows what you need before you ask him. If you have a negative image of your father, right now I pray that the Holy Spirit heals that so you understand that God is not your earthly father, God is your heavenly father. And God has always given you good things. God has always wanted good for you. God wants you to always be blessed. God wants you to always be healed. God wants you to always have. God wants you to always be abundant. And that God, you can call daddy. Daddy knows what I need even before I know that I need it. Thank you for always providing for us, always having something hidden for time of need. Thank you for always filling in the gap for us. Thank you that we can call you daddy, not just father. You're my daddy. We have intimacy with one another to where I can call you dad, daddy, and I can also call you my father. Lord God, that everybody will be able to understand this that you are their heavenly father and you already know everything that they need and you are willing and able to provide for every need that we have. Father, make us not be idle but be doers of the word and not hearers only. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have a